is we uh, put the kick net out so that the water will uh, bring the debris down into the net. And we kind of anchor the bottom of the net with rocks so that bugs don't get swept underneath it. Then what we do is we come out and we try and kick around the rocks and the different creek bugs are going to be living right underneath the rocks and and they will get caught in our kick net there. These rocks are pretty into the ground here with your soil type that's out here. We just turn over the rocks. Break them up and scare them into the net. And depending on what different bugs we find, we can tell a lot about a creek. No, just the coloration of the rock. But the bugs that we find can tell us a lot about a creek. Some of them are real sensitive to pollution. Some of the bugs, like leeches and worms, can live in pretty much any kind of water quality siltation. They're just kicking around. Is this moth having algae? What is that algae when it's, uh, the water gets low, or uh, is that what causes it? Algae? Uh, what causes the algae to grow? Every creek is going to have some algae in it, uh -huh. and too much algae can come from um, different nutrients in the water, like fertilizers and pesticides that get into the water. A bunch of those. I know what that yeah. bug is. I think they said they're orange, what? um, orange like colored darters. Orange like darters. Yeah. Ow! Ow! Oh, look at that big bug. That's a dragonfly larval. All of the bugs that we're going to be finding here in the creek, um, they have gills. They're in the larval form, kind of like um, a caterpillar form of before it turns into a butterfly. That's the form that these bugs are going to be in. And they have gills and they're going to breathe with the there's water. There's so much. Um, and, horse flies around here. And when they grow up, they will actually become flying insects, oh. like we see around. So this is the larval form, and this is a dragonfly larval. So you all oh. know what a dragonfly is, you've seen them flying around. Mm -hmm. This is what they look like before they become a true okay, adult. So they're pretty uh, neat bugs. Here's an even bigger one Ooh, right here. Wow, what's that one? That's just still a dragonfly larval. Oh, okay. They look pretty cool. And uh, dragonflies, they are, I think they're moderately sensitive, so they're, they're pretty good uh, uh, bugs to find. And our little fish here, it's called a darter, and yeah, I think that's going to be an orange throat darter. Yes, it is. Okay, now these orange throat darters, they can get bigger than this. They can probably get about the size of my pinky. Um, these darters are going to be living in riffles right here. And a riffle is where the water breaks over the rocks. And this is going to be their nice habitat to live in because these uh, small fish, they have no swim bladder. What a swim bladder is, it's just kind of like a balloon in their body that's filled with air and it helps them to float. That's how other fish float. These uh, darters do not have that, so they just sink on the bottom. So that's why they need to live in the shallower water, because otherwise that's just going to be kind of like a buffet for the bigger fish. If they were in deeper pools like this, where the bigger fish could live, that's why they stay in the shallow um, water. Also, on the side of their body, you can kind of look at the fish as it moves its fins. We 
can get away from the bugs. Um, the fins on the side of its body is pretty much like arms. It's going to come out from the side of its body and it's going to move around in the rocks. And that's how it moves around since it, since it can't float. So that's an orange throat darter. And darters are good to find in creeks. They're pretty sensitive to pollution. This is another of our bugs. This is called a mayfly. And these are very good. That's a horse fly. <laughs> These are mayflies. They are very sensitive to pollution and um, yeah. Well, they're good to find. And um, these are sensitive to different pollution in the water and different, uh, if, if we get too much um, erosion into the creek from siltation, then we uh, wouldn't be able to find these. So a mayfly is good to find. They have gills? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and the leech that's in here. Yeah, right. Every creek is going to have leeches. It's, it's just nature. How much bigger did they get? Oh, they can get pretty big. Yeah. I remember the leeches. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Leeches, leeches can live in pretty much anything. Um, so just from this one very quick collection, we have a sensitive bug, the mayfly, we have an intermediate species, the dragonfly, and we have a pollution tolerable, the leech. So just a very quick assumption of Jimmy Creek, it's probably doing really well. And that's a beetle, that's an air breathing one, so that wouldn't count for us. But um, yeah, it's Mary Ruth, she goes out monthly and monitors right behind her house and does chemical monitoring. Um, every month, the same time, same day, and um, we live right down. Yep. Lower on the creek. <laughs> and uh, I work for the state of Oklahoma Blue Thumb Education Program, which is what she monitors for. And we'll come out twice a year. Um, okay. I'll come okay. out here in uh, around Are you July sure you come out frame, that deep the water? collection. And we'll come out in January time frame. So we're getting have you been hot, walking through that deep water? And we'll do a bug collection. Um, the bugs can tell us a lot because they're actually living, breathing in this water, mm -hmm. and um, so their lifespan, depending on the bug, is usually about oh, three to five months. So they can tell us a pretty good history of the water quality over those months. Mm -hmm. We'll come out um, about every five years and do a fish collection. We just did a fish collection last summer. Last year, yeah, last, last summer. Year. Um, I can't remember what we got. I think it was a pretty decent collection. And the lifespan of the fish can be you know, a couple of years up to like 20 years. Mm -hmm. So they're going to tell us an even farther history of the water quality of the creek. Mm -hmm. So together with the um, quick chemical monitoring of the water at that second, along with the bugs and the fish, we can get a really good history of what's going on with the water quality. Mm -hmm. So they can tell us a lot. So that's why we do it. If you find something, then what happens? Like if you find something bad, you know? Um, if, if something is found bad, you would report to us, and then we would usually turn it over to uh, Department of Environmental Quality, DEQ. Mm -hmm. We're not regulatory at all. We're just a monitoring group, our water quality, mm -hmm. um, and we would turn it over to DEQ, and they would go about the um, official ways of figuring out what's going on and getting it corrected. 